Dr. Peter Wells, director of NEFTEX Petroleum. Talk to me about Iran and their nuclear program. Okay. Uh, Iran's had a nuclear program since the period of the Shah. It's nothing new. And the U.S. helped Iran develop its first nuclear program for power generation, as well as for research reactors. Uh, and when they signed the, the NPT, uh, the Non-Proliferation Treaty, uh, and they were a signatory. Um, Israel is not a signatory, although they have nuclear weapons. Uh, I think the intention was not to have a nuclear weapon when they signed that. However, I think the, the mood changed a lot in Iran in the last four to five years after the first election of Ahmadinejad. And having the threat of a nuclear capability would give the regime more longevity, give it stability, and give it something to defend itself with. Even if it never developed it, it could say, well, we could do. So I think there was a resurrection of the, the weapon, weaponization of their program uh, after the invasion of Iraq in 2003. I think that was a key, a, key, a key change in the strategic balance. Do you think that at first they really were looking to make electricity from the nuclear plant? Yeah, I think, I think the idea was they would have the capability, as they're entitled to under the NPT, to have the fuel cycle for, for nuclear, nuclear power generation. They wanted to control over the full cycle. Uh, they had this right under the NPT. And of, of course, provided they were fully open, they would have been allowed to... So their, their energy consumption uh, is too big. And nuclear power is a way of allowing gas then to be exported for export revenue and internally you have electricity generated by nuclear power. So this was, I think, the... Do you think that everyone should be allowed to recycle uranium? Um, I, I think there are proliferation issues with that, um, as well as uh, leakage issues. You know, I mean, it, recycling uranium, reprocessing it is a complex technology. Very few countries have mastered it. Uh, really, it should be done under strict controls, and probably only a few countries can apply them. Uh, I don't think Iran has the technical capabilities to do recycling. What about the United States? We don't recycle our uranium. Uh, no reason why you shouldn't. One cannot raise finance in international money markets anymore for refinery projects or for upstream projects. China is willing to provide the money and the people and the technology and then to lift the oil as well. So China is a one-stop solution. Uh, on a hierarchy of where, who they'd like to deal with, the Iranians have uh, Americans, Europeans, and then Chinese. So they'd far rather deal with Shell, Exxon, BP, uh, Total than they would with Chinese companies, but they don't have the option. I mean, we've closed off that option. The option is, is China or nothing. So they choose China. How long before the U.S. starts dealing that arrangement? Well, I think the, U, you know, the U.S. already feels that that arrangement is, is, is potentially a longer-term threat. I don't think they, they're you know, that naive. They don't see that. Uh, you know, the problem is that the policy options are, are very limited. You know, you, you, what, how do you deal with that? So you're, trying to get, you're trying to cajole, contain, and manage Iran to drop its um, nuclear ambitions. Um, and at the same time, you're going to say, well, we'd like to invest in your industry. I mean, those are two messages which are, and they don't go together. So, you know, the nuclear issue is probably the one thing which is in the way. And I, I, I don't see that being solved in the near term. That's a, you know, a long-term issue. Peter, thank you very much. You're most welcome.